My name is Anis Farid. I am a research project manager at Women's Aid Organization in Malaysia, and I'm also the principal investigator of a project entitled Endemicity Care and Gender Towards Building Resilience in Malaysia's Care Workforce and Infrastructure, also known as the ReCare Project. Thinking about care as an economy or a sector is not new, but post pandemic, what we've really seen is more willingness from stakeholders to come to the table and really enter the discussion. We don't really have a universal definition of what is care work. Does care work only involve paid care work? Does it involve unpaid care work? Does it involve the care work performed by domestic workers or those in the informal sector? This impacts the care workers on an individual and personal level because without a shared definition, we don't know what actually counts. And women and girls are especially vulnerable to this because of the fact that unpaid care work has disproportionately been shouldered by women historically. When we think about the economic models that we use, they tend to have a biased definition of what is productivity, which excludes unpaid care work. What we see during the pandemic is more unpaid care work had to be performed by disproportionately women and girls because there was an increased need to do more cleaning, for example, because of the disinfecting that was required. And then there was also more family members at home children couldn't go to school and also family members who contracted COVID, they needed to be taken care of. We see that the paid care sector, their workload also increased, such as doctors, nurses, and hospital cleaners who are really the frontliners in COVID response. So you see this balance between needing to perform more paid care work as well as unpaid care work. And in Malaysia, what we really saw was how stretched thin these individuals were because of these competing demands. And what this signals is a need to rethink the whole care ecosystem. When we speak about care work, especially paid care work, we may come into the conversation with a lot of assumptions about what this looks like, what it is. And so what we've done to counter that is to really involve the care workers in our research. So we involve them as research associates who collect data and they all will also help us analyze and interpret the data that we collect so that we can ensure that their voices and experiences are faithfully represented in the research that we're doing, because ultimately what we're working towards will impact them and these outcomes are for them. Engaging stakeholders very early on, so stakeholders such as those within government, decision makers and policy makers early on so that we can not only secure their buy-in, but also ensure meaningful allyship and support so that when we finish the project, hopefully there will be uptake of the findings. What we're really hoping to do is to strengthen the care workforce and infrastructure, particularly the essential care workers who we define as three subsectors. So the first is healthcare, including doctors, nurses, and hospital cleaners. The second is social care, and this includes social workers, as well as those who perform or provide care for children, the elderly, and those with disabilities. And finally, domestic care, which involves the domestic workers from the Philippines and Indonesia who are currently working in Malaysia. What's been really inspiring and helpful to see is the global direction of care the conversations around care, because working on care in Malaysia, it can feel very lonely. And it's good to know that we aren't alone in this. We aren't the only ones doing this work. So one personal outcome that I'm really hoping is over the past few days, we've been exposed to a lot of new ideas and potential solutions. And I'm really interested in seeing how transferable and adaptable some of these solutions may be to the Malaysian context. What we're hoping to do is really provide recommendations to build the resilience, not only of the care workforce and infrastructure, but the individuals themselves, because it's time for us to start taking care of the people who are taking care of us.